Welcome everyone back to the Back Issue Book Club. Uh, my name is Greg, and I'm joined by Rich. Yes, I, I am quite ready for the book club. Uh, Welcome, uh, my family. Are you workshopping a new character here? What's going on? I don't know. Uh, we need to have some nice uh, English music in the background. Yeah, we get, get in a robe in front of a fireplace with, I guess. Oh yes, with our with our with our pipes and a, and a cup of maybe fancy wine or something. Oh, I like it. I like a nice bur- Merlot. And that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> Tall wine uh, glass, long stem, but uh, even though it's got the long handle, we still hold it like that, like you said. Yeah, you got you got to do it fancy. I mean, uh, for those of you watching, I've uh, I shaved. I had a pretty big beard, but I uh, I shaved, and as I was shaving, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do the old uh, Rochambeau. I don't know what you call this, but it's what like Green Arrow has for facial hair. I was thinking Tony Stark, but okay, <laughs> Tony Stark. Okay, that works too. I'm the Marvel guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all good um but yeah so this week we read the three issue series called green arrow longbow hunters yes uh from 1987 by mike grell and he was one of those crazy people who wrote and drew the book together first green arrow books i've ever read awesome yes among the first for me i haven't read too many well, um, i have a lot of questions <laughs> oh okay uh but uh, yeah, I guess starting off, what'd you what'd you think overall? Well, first question is um, I, overall, I liked it. Uh, judging by the things that they talked about, I placed the time period around 1988, 89. Does that sound correct? Yeah, I mean, I think it came out in 87, so that's close. 87, okay. Well, I was only going by the references to uh, AIDS and crack. So yeah, that's that's what I uh, I noticed <laughs> specifically that one. Uh, panel where the guy was like the detective was like you know maybe it's not so bad with all these prostitutes uh with the aids pandemic and all that yeah which i'm like that's <laughs> cold but i remember the fear you know you have to think about the height of the fear of the aids pandemic and the fact that the, you know the girl was high on crack i'm like okay so that's new jack city right there <laughs> well, I, um as someone who lived through that was that uh pretty accurate like did you really feel that scare did you ever see new jack city I haven't. Okay. Uh, for those of anybody who has, that movie's a damn documentary. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Mm. The crack was bad in the cities. Absolutely. Um, a lot more addictive. Uh, it was very easy for the people to make. Uh, yeah, it was It was a really scary time in the inner cities. That's what really brought America down quite a lot during that time period. Uh, there was... that. Uh, there's no had never been a drug pandemic that has been as bad as the crack era. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's no joke. <laughs> mm. Yeah, crack is whack. That's what they say. Yeah. Well, I mean, the opening scene of uh, New Jack City throw, see, shows a couple of guys throwing another person off of the Queensboro Bridge, also known as the 59th Street Bridge, and they show him being thrown and like p- depicting that he's landing in the in the, in the river. But I know the bridge so well because I lived one block from it. <laughs> mm. uh, that I'm like, now I know exactly where he's falling, and they can easily put an airbag there and catch him. Um, the housing project that's right underneath there is called Queens Bridge, also known as the Bridge, which is one of the worst areas that I hung out there. So yeah, that's that was my hood. <laughs> gotcha. Well, um, so you had questions, mm-hmm. and they were when it was made, and then that, what? yeah. Well, that was my first question. Um, is Green Arrow, is that, uh, how do I put this? Yeah, Green Arrow and uh, Dinah, Dina? Dinah, yeah. Dinah. Are they, uh, is Dinah a, a, a long-running character with him in the in the books? Yes, they have okay. traditionally been a couple throughout most of uh, the history. Okay, and the costume that she put on, was that uh, supposed to be like Black Canary or something? So... That was a question that I had too. Um, I've never known Dinah to not have the blonde hair that she put on. Like mm-hmm. in all media that I've seen her in and read her in, she's just had the blonde hair. So I don't know what this uh, uh, pixie cut brunette situation was. Um, I don't know if it's canon or not, but um, that was a surprise well, for me. Was she a superhero? So, yeah. Um, I'll get into that when we're discussing a little bit later, but yes, cool. she has the ability to uh, 
like scream like super loud like enough to like cripple people so it is black so, canary from uh, the birds of prey movie yes yeah 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 okay. that's her okay. yeah I, I thought i recognized the costume um is green arrow always been somebody that is uh trying to rein himself in from actually mortally wounding people or you know or killing somebody because he seemed to be almost wolverine-ish <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he, as far as I am aware of, he's never been a f like a fan of like actually murdering. Um, doesn't mean it doesn't he, happen, but he did seem to have a dark side to him, though, which was very in contrast to the Robin Hood idea idealism that he thought I thought he he embraced. You talking about like when he was telling a story about on when he was on the island and how like he enjoyed the the kill well, or whatever. Like even when uh, he was trying to to save the the elderly couple, and they were trying to describe him to the police, and they depicted him as being like Errol Flynn. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, it seemed like you know he when he first took um, started training to become Green Arrow, he believed in something better, you know, a nobler cause, and, and you know. But the way his action seemed to be in at least somewhat contrast to that. So from what I've been able to tell, uh, Oliver Queen, Ollie, he is one of those other, he's another one of those like super rich guys turned uh, superhero like Bruce Wayne, Tony Stark, those kinds of guys. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think Tony Stark's a pretty good comp because uh, like you said, you know, after he got back, like he, he, he donned the costume and like, you know, he, he was like, damn, this is fun. And damn, it was fun. I think he said the line was okay. so, so I guess there's always been a little bit of a darker past, um, where he relives because before he fell off the boat, which was, which they talked about, um, right, he was drunk, <laughs> right? He was like, uh, they said it was a wave, but I know I just probably blacked out and fell over. Um, <laughs> He was like, that's that's a nod to how irresponsible he was, like a irresponsible rich kid, basically. Very Tony and Stark ish, yeah. <laughs> and the and the island changed him, much like the caves and the you know, however it was, Tony was captured, right? Uh, changed him. I think it's a similar path. I don't know if that answers your question. I don't know no, if I even does. remember your question initially. <laughs> does he seem to have that darker side, or he doesn't seem to be as noble as I originally thought he was going to be? But this was a darker comic book series, you know. Than I it, was. it was. Um, what do you think of the art style? I liked the art style, and that was one of my big uh, appreciations. And that's why I wanted to know what year it came out. Is we know that Frank Miller's Wolverine, which we talked about last week, had too much writing, too much text, and no appreciation for the reader's intelligence to figure things out within the artwork. Yeah. This would go five, six, seven panels without a single word and let you formulate your own storyline in your head. And I like that very much. You can come up with your own narrative, which was yeah. really great. It's almost like watching a, your own little movie clip. Yeah. it's It was cool. Um, it almost looked like it was like colored pencil for a lot of it. It was really, mm -hmm. it was really beautiful. It was really well done, I thought. Um, but yeah, it, it was, it, this is a mature read, you know, there's blood and arrows through eye sockets and stuff. So, yeah, but I mean like the very first person that get the first girl that gets killed in book one, uh, like on the first, on the second page, have you, I read the newspaper article and it says that her mutilated body uh, was found partially naked. And I'm like, they're showing the picture. She's stabbed. She's not mutilated. She's stabbed and she's fully dressed. What are you talking about? Yeah. So I didn't, I, I don't know. I wonder if somebody had written that and drawn it a different way. And then uh, the editors go, no, 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 you can't draw it that, you know, like put some clothes on her. You know, we can't, we can't show bare legs on her, put some leggings or something. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure they show nipple and a little bit of Ollie's junk at some point when he's jumping yep. out of the bathtub. <laughs> oh, believe me, I, I was broadcasting this onto, you know, from my phone the digitally onto my 75 inch screen with a chair, literally like this close to the screen. So I can look at everything. <laughs> yes, that was blurred junk. And I did not just need to see that on a 75 inch screen up close. You know? <laughs> uh, 
so I had a question. I don't know if you have it readily available to you. The the, the free issues. Yeah. I can pull it up real quick. I have my phone. And I'll be able to read it because I actually have glasses on. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna be honest, like this book was it was a little bit I'm talking not, about book one, two, or three. Uh book one, page ten. Six, eight, ten. Got it. You got it quicker than me. Wow. Wow, wow, we wow. Come on. Got him holding the plant and her talking. Well, when when Oliver's talking to the cops, he's like, "You know, I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm not going to tell you nothing." Right. I don't understand. I don't understand that panel. Can you? It's the one with the castle at the top, and it's right after the cops come to pick up the girl who OD'd and br- just ran through their window in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's the right of the three panels in the middle where it says she was yeah, their that... friend, but they don't know nothing. She got some bad crack, but she didn't see nothing. She just had some bad luck, but it don't mean nothing. And that's Oliver saying all that. I don't know what he's what's he doing there. Uh, he's referring. I, I actually got this. He's referring to the cop saying he's going to do an investigation to see if he can find out what happened to this girl. And yeah. he's telling him, you know what, you're going to run into people, and this is what they're going to say. You're going to find one person that says, oh, yeah, I was her friend, but I'm sorry, I don't know nothing. You're going to have another person that says, you know what, she got some bad crack. I don't know nothing. The other person is going to say, yeah, she, she just had some bad luck, man. It didn't mean nothing. Nobody's going to tell you anything. Everybody in this you. world is very apathetic. They don't care. They don't want to know. And that was, you know, another mentality that was very prevalent during the 80s as well. And that's why at the bottom there, he's like pushing the guy aside. He's like, this. I'm going to figure this out, essentially. Well, I, if you if, if you notice, he's kind of like referring to the pe- people, the three people behind him. And he's, oh yeah, he's he's showing like, them, like, like yeah, 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 yeah that's right. These people, this is the, this is what they're going to tell you. You're right. Okay, that that clears it up for me. Okay, awesome. Okay, because I read sense. it. No, <laughs> yeah, no, because I listen. Because <laughs> you know, I, when I read these in my head, I'm reading it with my head voice, and you know, sometimes I actually read the comics aloud because, and it helps me understand what i'm reading better so that was helpful mm-hmm. um <laughs> what did you think of when, oh, when he was you know, also this kind okay. of this book did, this book did kind of get me in trouble because like i said I was, I was showing this up on my 75 inch screen and the missus had fallen asleep she's taking a nap in the lazy boy there in the living room and when did she ah. wake up right when i'm on the 75 inch screen i've got black canary in her costume <laughs> <laughs> What beautifully drawn it's a, it's a comic it's a comic it's a comic no it's a comic <laughs> it, it's not an, it's not a, a you know an indie one either it's dc dc so it's, it's a big boy yeah right um so what i was gonna ask what do you think of the uh the tour part and how charming oliver is through all that with with uh dinah i didn't find him charming okay um i found him i'm 40 years old damn it i never had a family let's let's get married that was midlife crisis to me. <laughs> well, that part, yeah. But I thought it was charming when he was like, "Welcome to Sherwood Florist, my lady. Here's the second floor: ladies lingerie, antiques, and furnishings. Everything for the milady's discerning tastes. Yours. Third floor: men's smelly socks, scattered laundry, yeah. old magazines, and leftover pizza. Mine. But ours, ours, ours is, is done. Oh, bed, yeah. boom, chicka, wow, wow, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and, then, and then the next one, she was like, dinner was wonderful. Thank you. And he said, oh, it's from an old family recipe. And she was like, oh, I didn't know your family was Chinese. He said, uh, I, never said it was my, I never said it was my family. <laughs> um, yeah, he came across as kind of corny to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I, I know because I'm corny, so I can relate. <laughs> I liked it. Um, no, I mean, him setting up her floor. Um, completely foregoing his and then making sure the bed was ready. I'm like, I see what's on his mind. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do something yeah. nice for you and make you dinner. And here's the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's that one panel where he's, he's like, Oh shit, I'm talking to myself. And he's just like, Poof. yeah, <laughs> I thought that was so funny. That was kind of funny. <laughs> and he's like this. And then the camera shows from behind black Canary's legs. And he's like, uh, huh? <laughs> so funny. Boring. I didn't know you still had that costume, and she said, "Yeah, I, uh, what was it? As long as there's still a use for it, I'm going to keep it." <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I didn't expect to be so heavy with the uh, like philosophical stuff about a family where she was like, I mean, I'd love to have kids with you, but no, we can't. Yeah. And the reasons why, you know, and she said, right. I would love to have not, not only do I, she said, I don't want to have kids. And then she like said, look, I do want to have a family. I do want to have kids, but because of who I am and who you are, I'm not going to make them orphans. So yeah. It's you know there are some women that just, you know, that say I don't want to have kids. There are some men that say I don't want to have kids. What she is saying is I do want to have kids, but I don't want to give up my life, and that uh, my life may ruin those kids. Right. She can't so, in good conscience make that decision. Right. So that was quite a bit noble, and I think it actually set him back a little bit. Going, damn, she's right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't want to put my costume away on my bow, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which kind of reminds me of uh, a bit of Hawkeye from the MCU, you know, with his wife and the three kids and. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dealing with that whole coming home for Christmas and all that. Yeah. And the fact that uh, he sacrificed a lot. His family had to live off the grid, out of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s uh, system and everything else, and he still had to worry about it and his wife having um, the, if you haven't watched the Hawkeye series by now, I'm sorry, but you're, uh, the, you're, you're late. <laughs> yeah. The, the watch, which was uh, showing her that she was a, a mockingbird, an agent of shields and that their lives would be in danger as well. And the kids lives are in danger. So he, Hawkeye, Clinton Barton is living in fear every single day because he did not think through what Dinah did think through. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, and she made sure that Green Arrow, uh, Oliver, uh, understood that. So, mm -hmm. I guess there's more maturity in those characters than there were in uh, Mr. and Mrs. Clint Barton. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, going back to what you talked about the artist allowing us to be smart enough to mm -hmm. decipher what's going on. Um, there's a great page where Oliver is like kind of putting his arrows back together and like whipping up stuff in his, in his basement. Mm -hmm. And it also is showing in this, in the same, same page, a funeral happening. And it shows Oliver like with his arrow tip like this. So you can see his arrow style. And then on the next, next slot down, it's, it's got this new arrowhead that you don't recognize. So it's clearly telling you that this is somebody else. Uh, yes being an archer that's cool i liked how he did that that um, well that's one of the things i did like about the style that they did in this in this book in several t periods se several times was they'd have like six or seven panels side by side and it was a storyline b storyline a storyline b storyline so it's telling you this is going on at the same time this is going on so yeah yeah it was done really well i liked it yeah it was um i love her shot with that arrow that cut green arrows line on his bow <laughs> oh it was like the y the y yeah. arrowhead with yeah i'm gonna disarm you <laughs> he was like oh shit. I, I liked when uh, green arrow shot the uh the, right the, over the crotch of the guy oh yeah the, 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 next the, shot the will be an inch higher yeah <laughs> and then he ended up shooting it again just splitting that same arrow just for well, shooting, know, like and let me say he was so cruel up to that point that I actually thought that he shot him in his junk. Yeah. I mean, 80s pants were tight pants. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> have an inch of extra fabric down there. Okay? That's well, how good he is. At least I didn't. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Um, I mean, he gave one guy an ear piercing. Another guy he shot through the hand. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, I, was, I had a question for you. Someone named Jack Benny was referenced. Yes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Jack Benny was a TV variety show. Uh, he was notoriously uh, cheap. <laughs> oh. uh, they, they, they was, you know, the joke was like he had like billions stored away. He had uh, um, his co-host or co uh, another person on the show's name was Rochester. He, he's a comedian from the 50s and 60s, kind of like um, Johnny Carson, but before Johnny Carson. I see. Okay. Um, in the eighties, you'd remember it more. Uh, I mean, it's just like you, you, know, you saw the, 
the references to, well, these guys were from World War II because 1944 to 88 is 44 years or 87, 43 years. So if they were 20, they'd be 65, 70 years old. But by today, they'd be over 100. You're not going <laughs> to, they're not, not going to be <laughs> yeah. around. Yeah. That was a quite a, quite a set of guys. I, it was So what do they call them? Tunnel rats? Mm-hmm. Was that like a type of soldier? Uh, the Japanese and then uh, the Japanese in World War II, the Koreans did this, the Vietnamese did this. They dug intricate series of tunnels underground where they could hide, come out almost like a guerrilla type of warfare. And tunnel oh. rats were the guys that had, were the Americans that just would uh, go climb in there, see if you could find somebody, shoot them or drop a grenade and climb back out. Oh my God. So imagine it's a small hole in the ground. It's almost like a fox being in the hole and you're sending your, your small little terrier in there to fight him. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what it was is, you know, and, and, and if you're the American or ally or whatever, that's going into one of these holes, you don't know, does it turn left, does it turn right, split or whatever. The guy that's defending it knows it. So you got to be really <laughs> like, yeah, okay. I'm going to go in that hole and find somebody and kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, well, that would that would explain why you know one of the guys, one of the the kill, serial killers, was a as a, a rat a rat hole guy. And it was interesting because when he was doing the detective work, which is really cool in these books, he came across his shoe and he was like size five or seven or whatever, and he said that makes sense, you know, since he was a rat a rat hole guy. I'm still fuzzy on the whole um, serial killer thing because the the detective that was undercover was killed by a woman. Was that a copycat? What, what happened with? The, I saw that? that too. Yeah. Was that another prostitute who just wanted to get rid of the competition, or who she thought she was a competition, and just using the idea of uh, uh, there's a serial killer out here? I can kill my competition. I don't, I have no idea. And that story that would, never went anywhere. Yeah, I agree with you. We saw that like basically one page um, where the detectives were in the car and they they had like their bait female detective out there. Yeah, and she, you know, she said, "Come back in a couple of years to the kid," and then this woman walks up, like you say, and uh, and the detectives even thinking, "Wow, what? What if it's a woman? We didn't even think about that." <laughs> and then next thing you know, the knife is drawn on her, and she's dead. Um, and then nothing happened. We never see that woman again. Either of those women again. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if maybe the woman didn't kill the detective it was like oh okay you don't like women and left and then immediately thereafter the actual killer went oh stab stab i don't know oh maybe there there, there was a little tangent storyline that just dead ended and left you hanging with no information yeah Mm. i mean this definitely was like a lot of this with multiple killers going Mm -hmm. i'm maybe i'm for those listening i'm waving my hands back and forth like a dna strand here um (laughs) there's a lot of intertwined uh murderers and stuff like that um what do you think of so this is the second week in a row one two of two weeks so far where we have got something with japan in our comic books yeah absolutely (laughs) (laughs) what do you think of that whole yakuza uh b plot um I don't know if I needed to see both plots at the same time because I think at some points it became, or what you know, which criminal are we following at the moment? Mm-hmm. Um, the idea that the yakuza don't forget and they will remember forever. I, I get it, and I, you know, I'm going to train my daughter to be a weapon for you to use anytime you want. Um, it was interesting, but I think it was a little on the shallow side. It was good to get the character in, but. Um, yeah, we're going to give you $2 million and then, oh, you didn't use it 40 years later. We're going to send somebody to kill you. Well, they gave him the $2 million and then he got captured in the internment camps. Right. And then the, the world war two guys who were erased from the records, they erased themselves, but yeah, right. Who are now the, the, the shipping magnates and all these old guys that are getting murdered, uh, took that money from him. Yeah. Back in the fifties. Right. But then he went back to Japan, committed suicide honorably, but they made his daughter grow up in there in in the Yakuza. And her only goal was to kill these guys for taking the money because her father's shame or something like that. So it wasn't it wasn't shit. I forgot where I was. I forgot what you said that made me go on to this. No, you've you've cleared that up. I Did that make more yeah. sense? Yeah. Okay. I think it would have been good with just that as the storyline and not with the prostitute serial killer at the same time. I think it could have been a stronger storyline with just one 
main plot going on. That's fair. The only thing that was beneficial was that the girl, um, when she did get to kill the one guy, at the same time she saw somebody else in trouble and killed the serial killer, showing Green Arrow, well, maybe she's not totally bad. She, right. she could kill the right people. <laughs> Still killing somebody. So, <laughs> Yeah, kind of Punisher-esque. Uh, well, I mean, that's also kind of, I mean, Green Arrow at the very end when the uh, the guy goes to draw the gun on him and she shoots him through the window. He's kind of like, yeah, cool. Talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Uh, and for somebody that's extremely rich like Oliver is, it was very shocking to see him at the very end going, and by the way, I got a bag of money. Well, so you're right. I will say this, though. Um, when he was telling his story... In the first book, he was like, it cost me, it was awesome. It was damn fun, like we were talking about before, until it cost me all of my money, all of my friends, and nearly cost me my son. And that was a reference to Roy, who is on that iconic cover of Green Lantern, Green Arrow, shooting up heroin on his arm by Neil Adams, if you remember that cover. No, I don't. But I'm sure you'll put it in the video. So when I, I will watch put the it video, in the video. I'll, I'll yeah. be able to see it. Yeah, absolutely. You'll recognize it when you see it. Um, cool. So, I think at that point, they were opening up a shop and, you know, trying to live normal, like normal people for the a most part. A florist shop in a castle. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah. <laughs> Sherwood Florist. It was a great yes. name. <laughs> in keeping with Robin Hood. Yeah. Uh, so, I think that's why the money thing was mentioned and was worth mentioning. It um, still feels wrong for me to, to me that a hero would keep that. You know, it was weird. I yeah, I I, I read it and I was like, did I miss like a bu- like a bubble or something? But uh, yeah, he kept it. I I have to find out if this is canon or not. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, well, if in the next episode, uh, the next issue, they get a moat, we know where the money came from. <laughs> uh. Okay, Mike Grell stuff is not canon at all. In the Grell in the Grell version, Canary doesn't have the Canary cry, which is what I was talking about the screaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, that makes sense then. So this is just like a off universe or different universe version. All right, but I liked it. I thought it was a good good read. I, I thought the art was good. Didn't think I'd say this when we first started this, but I like this storyline better than Wolverine. So. <laughs> I'm wow, sure when I was okay. a kid, I would have liked Wolverine. You know, when I was a kid, I liked Wolverine better because it was more. In, it was the way books were written back then, and I was a kid. Yeah, uh, but being an adult, I considered the uh, Green Arrow series storyline to be more intelligently written, better drawn, um, more engrossing for the reader. I agree with you. Do you think it would hold up uh, better today than the Wolverine did? And do you, think it would hold, do you think it would hold up at all today? I do think it would hold up. They'd have to change some of the references because people are not going to know crack and AIDS. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Jack you Benny. Know, Jack <laughs> Benny. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they'd have to change the people, the old people to be world, not World War II, but, you know, like uh, Vietnam. Vietnam. You'd have to change yeah. a few of the references to be time um, appropriate. However, the style of the writing, the drawing, the way that they make the, the reader come up with their own narrative I think is very important and I do think that this storyline would do well today maybe not as well as it did back in 87 but it would still be an appreciated read by today's readers awesome I, I, I agree with you on uh, on all accounts cool this is actually turning out to be a really fun little series Greg I want to thank you for coming up with the idea for this oh I I have to be honest. I, I'm having a lot of fun doing it too. <laughs> I mean, so. the idea of a comic book channel, you know, like reading comics. Hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, you got to twist my arm. No, no, I don't want to read comics. Boom. It's just, it's just so easy to get caught up in the, <laughs> the other the other parts, you know. And I'm not saying it's bad. It's just I wanted to read them. So, what do we have on tap for next week? Okay, so next week, uh, it was voted on in the Patreon that we are going to read 
Stray Dogs, numbers, one through numbers, Stray Dogs, the series from early 2021. It was a five issue series, and this is just the original Stray Dogs, not the two extra Stray Dog, dog days. days. Dog days. Stray Dog Dog Days. Yeah. So the first week I, I picked Wolverine, the second one you picked, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then this one is Reader's Choice. I yep. love it. Or, or Patreon's Choice. Sorry. Yes. Um, Patreon's Choice. So if you'd like to have a voice and a, an ability to vote, make sure you join our Patreon page. That'd be really cool too. We have absolutely, the, yeah. We lowered the cost on it to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to do so. Yeah, and simplified everything. Just it's just one tier now, and mm -hmm. um, we've had a couple of suggestions in YouTube, which we are taking suggestions via YouTube. But then the people who are on our Patreon are going to actually vote in the polls of those suggestions of what we actually read next. So. Make sure you check those out. And also, uh, while we're promoting, we got our two exclusive comic yes. covers coming up. You want to tell them about that? Absolutely. I don't mind at all. We have Radiant Pink, which is a limited series from Image in the Supermassive Universe. Uh, uh, we have our issue number one, which is going to be hitting Syndicate Comics on December 7th. This is a Deegan Pecoris beautiful cover. It really is. If you'd like to see it and order it, We've got the book, the book signed, the book in bundles, sketch art, all kinds of bundles at syndicatecomicsshop.com. For those of you on there. the, well, yep, you can see it in the uh, in the video. But if you're on, um, what do you call it? The where people just listen podcast. <laughs> podcast. Thank you. <laughs> I'll put it in the description of the podcast, so you'll be able to click on it there too. Oh, absolutely fantastic! But yeah. uh, yes, even if you go to. Uh, uh, comic Geek Shop or My Comic Geek or whatever the heck that thing is called. Um, they have League the of Comic Geeks. League of Comic Geeks. I know there's yeah. some geeks in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, they have the preview page for this, the book itself. And in the background, they, they picked what they thought was the best art to represent as a background picture. And it's, of course, Deacon Pecoris' art. Because, I mean, seriously, I want to sell the book. Don't get me wrong. But no, if, if this book went to another store, I, I would tell still say this is the best cover. It is beautiful and limited to 500. And then one week after, on December 14th, Mark Millar has a new book coming out called Nightclub. Did it again. I'm getting better. Boom. <laughs> I've Nailed been calling it. it Night Gang for so long. Uh, <laughs> it's the story of three teenagers that get bitten by vampires. And rather than just turn it into... Uh, blood-sucking people of the night, they use the powers of these vampires to fight crime. And this has already been optioned, if I'm not mistaken, by Netflix. So, woot woot. And another fantastic cover for this one. Uh, again, with uh, the cover, cover signed, bundles, sketches, all the, uh, the bells and whistles, everything that you could possibly want at syndicatecomicsshop.com. So, and this is, a fun, this is a fun book because it's only $1.99 for the regular issues that's kind of mark millar trying to prove that comics don't have to keep becoming expen more expensive and just so we can jump on the same bandwagon with mark millar we uh syndicate comics and most people generally charge twenty dollars for their exclusives because yes. of the costs that are associated on both of these books they're fifteen dollars and if you want to spend the 20 you feel like doing it it will come signed with a COA, which is a custom designed COA. We're not, we're pulling out all the stops on this and trying to give you a good quality product. So yeah, I don't think I've seen that uh, price at any other uh, exclusive retailer since I've been looking, and they're all twenty at least, usually thirty with a signature. Yeah. So, and this will also we're gonna have big uh, events on the seventh and the tenth, on the fourteenth and the seventeenth. Uh, where we're going to have in-store events. Uh, and Trends or Trash is going to be the seller for us on Whatnot. We're going to have a big live event. You want to order it that way so you can see uh, Deegan actually sign your book. That'd be fantastic, too. We're yeah. there. We're going to have a big part. We want to have fun with this. That's the bottom line. So it's comics. <laughs> yep. Guys, I want to thank you so much for joining us, as always. If you're here with us on YouTube, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Drop a comment below and click on those notifications so you see when more videos are pop, uh, popping out for you. If you're hearing us on the podcast or on any other format, don't forget to jump onto YouTube so you can just say hi and just throw a little thumbs up for us and say that you like it. Uh, anything else to add, sir? I think we covered it. Fantastic. Guys, thank you so much for joining. So we see you on the next one. Mahalo.